All right, you have your Bibles with you this morning? There's a few things I want to share with you before I ask you to open your Bibles. Just have them ready. A few days ago, I was reading my Bible, which I do every day. And uh, I began reading about promises that God has made for those who truly love Him. Anybody truly love God? Now, I'm not going to share all of them that I found because there's many. But just some of the verses that include the words, those who love him or those who love God. There's some exciting, wonderful promises. And uh, I want to encourage you on your own. If you have a strong concordance, look them up and read them. And if, and if you so uh, are led, I would write them down or type them out and keep them handy. Because knowing what God has promised for those who truly love him, will get you by and get you over any situation you'll ever face. Yeah. Amen. So let's look at a few of them, and I'm sure that they're going to bless and inspire you just like they have me. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, first of all. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Talking about wonderful promises of God to those who love Him. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Deuteronomy. Okay, there we go. Deuteronomy chapter 7. And verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him. Notice God keeps covenant with everyone who loves Him. That is a wonderful, encouraging promise. Knowing that God is a covenant-keeping God encourages me. That's, that's in the forefront of my thinking. Whenever I'm facing any kind of challenge, I know God is a covenant-keeping God. And if I know what He's promised me in that covenant, then I can rest assured He will bring it to pass if I will not give up. Can you say amen to that? And it goes on to say, those that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So that would certainly include you and me. A thousand generations have not passed yet. And God keeps covenant to those who love him to a thousand generations. So once again, that would include you and me. And to me, that is major, praise God. The psalmist tells us just how faithful God is to his covenant. Go with me to Psalm 89. And once again, I'm not reading all the verses that state this because I want you to do that on your own because it will inspire and encourage you, particularly when you're involved or being faced with challenges and, and adversity. So in Deuteronomy, I mean in Psalm 89, 34, one of my favorite verses, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. God will never break covenant. He will never alter anything that has come out of his lips. That is so comforting to know that God does not change what he says based on what's happening in the world around us. He doesn't say, I will supply all your needs as long as the economy is going well. No, no. God will never alter anything that has come out of his mouth. He is a covenant-keeping God, and I think somebody ought to give him a shout for that, praise God. And then it goes on to say, once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie. Not only not lie to David, here as it says, but he will not lie to us. The Bible tells us that, that he is not a man that he should lie. He, 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 he says, and the Bible says that it's impossible for God to lie. So once again, that's very comforting. A wonderful promise to those that love God. They can always rely upon Him to keep His Word. He's always dependable. As we said in Deuteronomy chapter 7, He's the faithful God. That's one of the things I love about Him. Uh, I love everything about Him, but one of the things I love the most is He is the faithful God. 
And I have this testimony. Amen. All these years that I've been walking with him, from 1969 to this present time, he has never let me down. Not once. Never let me down. Amen. Now you've heard me say it before. If I had been him, I would have done it a little faster. But I'm not him. And he did do it right on time. Hallelujah. Amen. He always makes sure that he's right on time. Now for some of us, we may not feel his timing was right, but he's never late. Hallelujah. He's a covenant keeping God. And it's impossible for him to lie. Whatever he said, then he will back it. Praise God. Now go to Psalm 5. Psalm 5. Once again, just reading some of the promises to those that love God. Psalm 5, verse 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Anybody in here love the name? I said, does anybody love the name? Then let them be joyful. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, this is how I act when I'm joyful. Is that the best you can do? <laughs> Amen. And then it says, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous, and with favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. And most of you know that that's one of my favorite verses. Anytime I see the word favor, my spiritual antenna goes right up. Because favor, it's what I, it's what I experience. It's what I, I, I experience nearly every day of my life. I'm the favor man. Hang around me and get on you, praise God. Just, just ask Eric. Have you shared that testimony here yet? Come on up here. You got a good testimony. This is what happens when you hang around somebody who's extremely highly favored with God. Well, we're in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, he goes to this men's store that uh, he's been there many times. And so we go in there and, well, it's a nice store. Like there's high end stuff there, quality. And that quality is reflected in the price. <laughs> yes. And so I, I saw a sale rack. So I went over to the sale rack and there was a nice pinstripe suit. And uh, so I looked at it and it was 50% off. And it's, it's a brand called Canali. And Canali is a nice Italian brand. It's Italian. Italian. So I picked it up, you know, and I put it on and went to the mirror, you know, it didn't quite fit just right. But it was marked down 50%. Uh, it was $1,250. So it was marked down from $2,500. It just didn't fit right, you know, for $1,250, you want it to fit right. <laughs> so I put it back up and he says, did you find anything you liked? I said, well, yeah, it just didn't quite fit right. And we walked out. That night we went to the church. The, the church gave him a gift card to that same men's store. So we had to go back. And, and I, would, I didn't know I was going to get it. You didn't, yeah. No, huh? So we went back the next day. He says, I got to spend my gift card. And so I went straight for that suit because maybe it'll fit differently today. <laughs> maybe I was experiencing a little bloating, you know? Yeah. Yeah, retaining water. Well, I walked over and I looked at the, at the price tag again. It had been marked down from $1,250 to $400. And you said... I said, that's the favor, favor of God. So I tried it on, went to the mirror. It fit perfectly. <laughs> I took it to the counter and uh, once they measured me and did some changes, thing, the guy said, $400 for a canal? I've never seen them priced. I said, that's the favor of God. Yeah. Went back to the church. The pastor says, you got a Canali for $400? I know the owner personally. I buy all my suits from him. I've never gotten that kind of a deal. And we said, that's, that's the, the favor, favor of God. God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I love that promise. <laughs> favor of God surrounds you like a shield. Amen. Amen. Anybody love God? Amen. Well, that's what you can expect when you truly love God. The favor of God will surround you like a shield. Amen. 
Uh, it says, let them all rejoice that put their trust in thee. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. And the word defend means protect them from all opposition. And the message translation says, let the party last all night. <laughs> Amen. Let the party last all night when you know that you are surrounded by the favor of God and that God always protects you from all opposition. Amen. Amen. The Passion Translation says, your favor wraps around each one and covers them under your canopy of kindness. So we have the canopy of kindness, the canopy of favor that we're entitled to walk under each and every day of our life. Amen. Get under it. Amen. Amen. Now let's go to Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Some of you might be wondering, well, what does this have to do with the prophetic word? I hadn't got there yet. Just hold on. Okay. Psalm 31. And uh, let's look at verse 23. Is that right? Psalm 31 and verse 23. Yes. O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. The message translation says, God takes care of all who stay close to him. God takes care of all who stay close to him. Tell somebody nearby, don't worry about a thing. God has got you covered. Go to Psalm 97. Psalm 97. Look at verse 10. Ye that love the Lord and hate evil, he preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. The message translation says, those who love him, he keeps safe. The Passion Translation says, well, that's the next verse, Psalm 145. Go there with me. Psalm 145. In verse 20 from the King James says, The Lord preserveth all that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. The Passion Translation says, God, you watch carefully over all your devoted loved ones like a bodyguard. Amen. You watch carefully over all your devoted lovers like a bodyguard. He goes on to say, and let everyone everywhere join me in praising the beautiful Lord from now and throughout eternity. Amen. Is there anyone in here ready to do that right now? Praise the Lord right now. Let me, let me read that again. Let everyone everywhere join me in praising the beautiful Lord from now and throughout eternity. So why don't we just do that? Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Amen. Because he protects, he watches over carefully all those that are loved and are devoted to him. Amen. So don't ever stop allowing the favor to flow or the praise to flow out of you because of the favor that God has bestowed on your life. Amen. Are you ready to hear some more? Yes. Let's go to the New Testament. First Corinthians chapter two. Now you've heard me share this verse many times in various messages that I've brought to you over the years. First Corinthians chapter two. Verse nine, as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has the heart of man conceived all the things that God has prepared for them that love him. The Amplified Bible says, 
all the things that he has made and keeps ready for those who love him. And the message translation says, no one's ever seen or heard anything like this. Never so much as imagined anything quite like it, what God has arranged for them who love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that says to me that the best is yet to come. Look to your neighbor and tell him the best is yet to come. And now one more promise that I want to share with you that uh, the Holy Spirit impressed upon me to, to spend some time on this morning. And let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now those are just a few that I've selected to share with you this morning, but there are many, 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 many. Romans chapter 8 and look at verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And we know, everybody say, we know that all things work together to them that love God and called according to his purpose. I'm going to say it again. All things work together to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. The Amplified Bible says all things are fitting into a plan for good. All things are fitting into a plan for good. That's the reason why you should never, never get up, give up when you're facing adversity. Do get up, but don't give up, okay? <laughs> don't lay in bed and cry all day. Feel sorry for yourself. No, we should never, ever give up because all things are fitting into a plan for your good. God has something in mind. He's working on something behind the scenes. And if you won't give up, he will not allow you to fail. I said, he's not going to allow you to fail. All things are fitting into a plan for your good. The message translation says, and it's, it's, worked, it's working into something good. Something good is going to come out of your adversity. Amen. 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 Now, on the surface, it doesn't look as that, that way. Uh, when you just look at what you're going through, and particularly if you've been going through it for quite a while, then it's hard to imagine or to see beyond the adversity through the eye of faith that something good is going to happen in the midst of all this. And a lot of people never see the good because they give up too quickly. I, I've, I've said it before, and the Lord said this to me years ago. He said, most people give up right on the verge of their breakthrough. If they only stood a little longer, they would have experienced their breakthrough. But the Bible says that we are not to be weary and we are not to faint. Amen. Be not weary. Don't faint. And I realize that sometimes what you're going through, the pressure of it, uh, you have a tendency to, to just say, it's not worth it. Why, why do I keep believing like this? Why do I keep going to church? Why do I keep giving? Why do, why do I keep praying? Why do I keep confessing the word? What good has it done? That's exactly what the devil wants you to think. And that's exactly the way the devil wants you to talk. You're on the verge of giving up. You're on the verge of quitting. And he hopes you do. But if you won't give up, then God is working on a plan for your good. Amen. He's always working behind the scenes. I... I told Justin that I might have the, the group to stay up and sing the song about even when I can't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. We won't do that. You know the song. Sing it to yourself sometimes. When you're at home, feeling bad, nothing's working. I can't go home with you, jump out of the closet and say, Hallelujah. Why don't we sing that song? 
No, you're going to have to be, become your own best cheerleader. Right. Amen. Amen. All I can do is tell you what the Bible says. Uh, and I don't preach anything that I don't live myself. So I know it works. Hallelujah. Amen. And trust me, I've been in places over the, over the past 50 years or more where in the natural, it looked like absolutely nothing working. I said to the Lord one time, I have been standing. I've been standing and having done all to stand, I have continued to stand. What do I do next? He said, now you're scriptural. <laughs> Keep standing. <laughs> I wanted to say, I almost did. Is there anybody else up there? I need a second opinion. <laughs> and I heard him say this. If you only knew what I knew, and if you could only see what I see, you'd be rejoicing right now. I said, I said, well, Lord, what is it that you know? And what is it that you see? He said, son, even though you feel like giving up, you're still standing. Barely, but you're still standing. <laughs> Amen. You've got the devil right where you want him. I do. Looks like the opposite. Looks like the devil's got me where he wants me. He said, if you knew what I knew and you could see what I see, you'd be rejoicing right now because you are about to experience the breakthrough you've been believing for. So just keep standing, keep rejoicing and tell the devil, if you think that I'm going to give up, you got another thought coming. The only one's going to give up in this situation is you devil, because the Bible says, if I resist you, you will flee. And you don't have that promise. You don't have a promise from God that if you resist me, I will flee. No, the promise is if I resist you, you will flee. So as far as I'm concerned, you're on your way out now. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout if you believe it. Praise God. Amen. And I, I had to learn that. You know, I, I, I remember one time uh, years ago, this is way back in the 70s. And we were experiencing a, a financial uh, challenge. And, and what it was then, it wouldn't be a challenge today. But it was a challenge back then. And in the natural, I, I just couldn't see any way possible of overcoming this. And uh, I was at my office. And I was under such pressure. I just got up, got in my car, and went home. And uh, I went into my study. I said, Lord, I don't know what else to do. I said, well, I could, I could sell my car. He said, well, when you get through with that, what are you going to sell next? Well, I could sell my house. He said, well, you wouldn't have a car and you wouldn't have a house. That's not the problem here, son. He says, the problem is you've got some blessing blockers in your ministry. I said, well, what are they? He said, they're not watch, they're who's. <laughs> I, had, I had some people that, that weren't in agreement. Now, I, I remember uh, years ago, and I'll get back to that story, I was in South Africa and uh, Brother Copeland's representative there at that time. Ray McCauley, who I was with, Ray McCauley and I went over to see him and uh, talk to him about some finances that were not showing up on the books that I knew they had received. So I asked Brother Copeland, uh, I called him. I said, Brother Copeland, uh, I'm on the board of directors. How much authority do I have as a member of your board? He said, you have as much authority as I do. I said, well, if I'm, if I'm right about this man, I'm about to fire him because he's stealing from you. He said, if you if you've feel that from the Lord and you have the evidence backing it, 
then you have my permission to do whatever you need to do. So we called the man and told him we were coming to see him. Just as we got there, he drove off in his car and took off. And we followed him, chasing him. <laughs> and he's, he's, I mean, he's driving like a nut and, and we're trying to keep up with him. Well, eventually he, he wrecked his car. And obviously we caught up with him. He, he wasn't harmed, but he did wreck his car. And we took him out and said, uh, why did you run? He said, I knew what you were coming for. I said, well, why, are, why, are you, why have you been doing this in Brother Copeland's ministry? He trusted you. He said, well, I was under pressure. I needed the money. I said, well, that, that makes you a thief because you've been doing it for quite a while now. And so I have talked to Brother Copeland and I'm on the board of directors and consider yourself fired. We will find a new director for this ministry. Well, he was a blessing blocker. Amen. Because Brother Copeland knows how to believe God for prosperity. He's the one who taught me how to believe God for prosperity. Amen. Amen. And uh, when the ministry was suffering financially, it wasn't because Brother Copeland was doing something wrong. It wasn't because he wasn't applying his faith. There was a blessing blocker. And going back to my story, the Lord said, if you sell your car and you sell your house and put all that money in the ministry and it doesn't solve the problem, what are you going to, solve? What are you going to sell next? Amen. He said, it's not, it's not what is the problem, it's who is the problem. He said, you got some blessing blockers. And I removed them. And the blessings begin to flow again. Right. Amen. Amen. I had, an, I had a, a general manager one time who was not handling my finances properly. And uh, I didn't know about it until I was up in Peoria, Illinois. I was back, I was on the radio back then all over the nation. And I was up in Peoria and the station that I was on in Peoria, the station manager wanted me to come and do a live interview. And I did. And, and we, we had a good time together and I did not know. And this man did not even bring it up. I did not know that my radio bills were three months behind. And we had the money, but it wasn't being spent on the radio bills. Not only just this radio state, but the stations all over the country were three months behind on payments. And this man never said a word to me. So when I got home, I happened to go up to the office one night and I went into his office and I noticed on the desk in a folder were radio bills and they were three months behind. And so the next day I called him into uh, my office and I said, uh, why, why have you let these radio bills uh, become past due? He said, well, we needed the money and other things. I said, that's, that's, not, that's not the way we operate here. We gave them our word that we would pay the bill every month. Yes, sir. You should have come to me and told me that we don't have the money to do this, but we pay the radio bills. Amen. Another time, years later, my general manager was not paying payroll taxes and I didn't know anything about it. Now that, that's a no-no. And I'll get back to that one later. I got all kinds of stories. Don't, don't tell me you've never been through anything like we've been through. Yo mama. I've been through everything you've been through. Amen. And I got the testimony to prove it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I, I said, uh, well, uh, I guess... We're going to have to do something to get these radio bills covered. And uh, I told him what I was planning on doing. He said, you can't do that. I said, why not? He said, you can't do that. I said, would you walk outside with me? 
and we walked outside and I pointed at the building. I said, whose name is on that building? It said, Jerry Savelle Evangelistic Association. You don't tell me what we can't do. You work for me. I'm Jerry Savelle. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. I said, in fact, I think it's time for you to leave. So I let him go. Got the blessing blocker out of there and the money came in and we paid the bills and never got behind again. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Maybe I need to do a little checking up. Maybe there's some blessing blockers around you. I knew my wife would. No, I'm not talking about your wife. (laughs) It's not that woman he gave you. Oh, you don't know this woman. No, it's not her fault. Maybe you need to look in the mirror and check up on yourself and maybe you will find, I have found the blessing blocker. It's me, you know. (laughs) Okay. Did that help anybody? Then do some self-inventory and find out maybe you're running around with the wrong people. All things are fitting into a plan for your good. This is why no matter what you may be going through right now, you should never give up on God and you should never give up on his word. You've heard me say it before. It's never over until God says it's over and God will never say it's over until you win. Amen. 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 God's plan is for you to experience Oh, here we go. Progression. Advancement. And promotion. And as a bonus, your highest expectations being fulfilled. Can you say amen to that? That's the plan that he's working on right now. If you could only see what he's doing, if you only knew what he's doing, then giving up would not be an option. He's working on a plan. He's working on a plan. It's a plan for your good. And God's plans work. Hallelujah. I thank you. I'll lift your hands and go ahead and rejoice. Amen. God's working on a plan. Amen. And that plan includes progression, advancement, and promotion. God is always working behind the scenes. Even when you can't see anything happening, even when you can't feel anything happening, he's always working behind the scenes. He's planning for you to experience some major breakthroughs despite the adversity and the challenges that you might be going through right now. Paul goes on to say in verse 31 of Romans 8, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Another translation says that God is for us, who can successfully be our enemy. The message translation says, with God on our side, how can we lose? If God is on our side, then how can we lose? So tell your neighbor, hang on. on. It's not over yet. yet. God's working on a plan in your behalf, behalf. your victory, your your breakthrough. breakthrough. It's on its way. So go ahead and give him a shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 17. For our light affliction. Paul calls whatever you're going through right now, light. Now you may not consider it to be light. <laughs> If he, if he knew what I was going through, he wouldn't be calling it light. Well, let's go check on your own what he went through. Yes. Amen. And I don't think anybody in here can match what no. he went through. No. And all of that he considered to be light. light. My Lord. 
light affliction. For our light affliction is but for a moment. That means it's not going to last forever. That means it's seasonal. That means it's not permanent, praise God. So why, why get all bent out of shape over something that's not even permanent? You're going through it now, but you're not going to be going through it forever. What has got you worried and frustrated right now, in just a few days perhaps, it could all be behind you and you're sharing a testimony with somebody. Amen. That is, if you got a proper perspective about it, Amen. that it's not permanent. Amen? Amen? He goes on to say in verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, and the word temporal means not permanent, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So if you can see it, if you can perceive it with your five physical senses, then it's not permanent. Amen. Sometimes when you are low on finances, open your checkbook and look at the balance and say, I am not moved by what I see. <laughs> One time I did this. I wrote in my, in my checkbook when I had not enough in there to cover everything I needed to cover. I said out loud, I am not moved by what I see. And I wrote underneath it, you are subject to change. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You are subject to change. Next time your body's not doing all that well, go stand in the mirror and say, stand in front of the mirror and say, I am not moved by what I see. The way you feel is subject to change. Amen. 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 Sometimes you just have to pull yourself by the ear and make yourself go in there and stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself. Don't tell me you don't know how to do that. You do. Amen. Amen. You walk, you walk from one room to the other talking to yourself. You drive down the road in your car talking to yourself. And that's very convenient because somebody thinks you're talking on a cell phone. And back years ago, if you were talking to yourself in the car, people would look at you. The guy's a nut. He's carrying on a conversation with himself. Nobody else is in the car. Sometimes that's the best conversation that you'll ever have. It's the one you have with yourself. Amen. Self, just get up and quit acting like this. Self, get, get out of your thinking you're going to give up. Self, cheer up. Come on. Amen. Amen. There have been times I've been on a motorcycle and I have had to pull over after talking to myself so that I could get off the bike and shout and run around it a few laps because <laughs> you can't do that while you're still riding, okay? Amen. Amen. So some of those self conversations are some of the most powerful conversations you'll ever engage in. Amen. The message translation says, we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart, but not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These, listen to this. Now, this is a scripture I was reading one time, the first time somebody gave me a message translation Bible. And back then it was just the New Testament. And I'm on my way to Kenya and I'm on the, the flight and I took this Bible with me because I'd never read it before. Uh, it was brand new, brand new translation. And I'm reading from this chapter. And when I got to this verse, I just broke out laughing. And the flight attendant came by and said, are you okay? I said, yes, I'm okay. Why would you ask? She said, well, you laughed out loud and we don't know, nobody else knows what you're laughing at. I said, the Bible, the Bible. <laughs> I've never seen anything funny in the Bible. I said, you haven't read this copy yet. You haven't read this translation yet. Now, if you don't think this is funny, just wait until you hear it. Let me go back. We're not giving up. How could we? 
even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart, but not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times. And I just broke out laughing. These hard times are just small potatoes compared to the coming good times. Look at your neighbor and say, there's some good times coming. Let the good times roll. Hallelujah. Amen. We're moving on up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now it goes on to say from the message translation that God is preparing for you and me if we won't give up and won't allow what we're going through to move us, to distract us, to shake our faith, then he says he is preparing for us a lavish celebration. A lavish celebration. I think I'll just start right now. Amen. Anybody ready for a lavish celebration? Glory to God. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them what you're going through is small potatoes compared to the coming good times. You're headed for a lavish celebration and give him another shout of praise. Hallelujah. I personally believe that when you and I refuse to give up, we stand our ground, wait till God completes the plan and it's manifested, then all of heaven rejoices with us. That great cloud of witnesses rejoice with us every time we experience another victory. So rest assured, the almighty God, your God, the faithful God is not going to let you fail if you would just do what he told us to do in order to experience progression, advancement, and promotion. Stay in faith, remain focused on the promises of God, and refuse to allow anything in the world to distract you. Amen. You, you fulfill that, then you're going to have a year of progression, a year of advancement, a year of promotion, and your highest expectations will be fulfilled. Amen. It's going to happen despite the adversity and the challenges that you might be going through right now. God's plans will be fulfilled. Somebody said, how can you say that? Watch. God's plans will be fulfilled. How can I say that? Because Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. So I'm going to say it again. God's plans will be fulfilled for those that love him. Even when it seems chaotic and out of control, God is not going to let you fail. Search the Bible on your own and find all the stories you can find of how God blessed his people despite what they were going through when they were willing to obey his instructions. Amen. And if he did it for them, then he will do it for you. Now let's look at a couple of them very quickly. Let's go to Genesis chapter 26. Everybody still with me? Genesis chapter 26. And let's begin in verse one. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land, which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Now notice once again, God is a covenant-keeping God. Whatever he swears to a covenant partner, then he will back it to the hilt. Amen. We have a covenant with God. Jesus is the reason why we have that covenant with God. Amen. 
And notice he told Isaac in the, in the time of famine, go not to Egypt. Don't look for some other way. I will be with you. Don't lean to the arm of the flesh. I will be with you. I will bless you. And you know, we've talked about it many times in the past. The word bless means empower to prosper, empower to rise above, empower to excel, empower to increase and multiply. He says, I will be with you. And what does the Bible say? If God be with us and if God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. So if God is with you and God is blessing you, then you're going to make it. I said, you're going to make it, praise God, despite the adversity, no matter how challenging it might be, you are going to come out on top if you'll stay in faith. Can you say amen? amen. Now let's drop down to verse six. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar <clears throat> and verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great, went forward, grew until he became very great, for he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Now, I want you to highlight in your Bible, as I always do, and just to prove to you, I do. <laughs> okay? I want you to highlight or underline so that it'll jump out at you every time you pass by Genesis chapter 26. Highlight or underline the words waxed great, went forward, grew until it became very great. Waxed great, went forward, grew until he became very great. And remember, this was despite his adversity and his challenges. Amen. Sounds like to me, even though Romans chapter eight, verse 28 hadn't been written yet. Sounds like to me, Isaac is experiencing it. All things work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. God's, God's been doing this forever. Amen. Amen. For those that love God, there are promises that he fully intends to fulfill in your behalf simply because you're one of those who love him. Don't ever stop loving God. Amen. Don't ever stop chasing God. Don't ever stop getting close to God. Amen. Because these wonderful promises are for you. And, and the, the majority of them have to deal with when you're facing adversity. And that's good to know that you have these wonderful promises when you're facing adversity. Okay. Now, <clears throat> wax great, went forward, grew until he became very great. The Amplified Bible says he received a hundred times as much as he had planted and the Lord favored him with blessings. The Lord favored him with blessings. And remember, he's progressing. See, I believe wax great going forward growing until you become very great is a characteristic of progression and advancement. Amen. Amen. The Amplified Bible goes on to say, and the man became great and gained more and more. That's what waxed great means. He gained more and more until he became very wealthy and very distinguished. Amen. I don't know how in the world anybody who studies the Bible can come up with, it's not God's will for us to prosper. Amen. I, I don't know how you get that. You have to be totally duped in religious tradition. Amen. But it's very clear right here. When God says, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to bless you and you do what he says. Now, we wouldn't have this testimony if Isaac had gone to Egypt. See, it's very important that you follow God's instructions. 
If he'd have gone to Egypt, we wouldn't have this testimony. But he said, don't go to Egypt. You dwell in the land that I will tell thee of. Yes. There I will be with you. Yes. There I will bless you. Yes. So whatever you might be facing right now, there are some instructions that God is ready to give you. It's not likely you're going to hear them watching CNN. You hear them when you go to your prayer closet. You hear them when you get alone with God. You hear them when you draw near unto Him and He will draw near unto you. Amen. Are you still here? God's not holding out on us. It's us who are not following the instructions. Amen. So notice here, the man became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and very distinguished. The message translation says, he took in a huge harvest. God blessed him. He got richer and richer by the day until he became very wealthy. Everybody say wealthy. Did it stick in your throat? Oh, <laughs> a lot of Christians can't even say wealthy. Some of them get stuck on rich. He got rich and wealthy, rich and wealthy. No, he didn't get just rich and wealthy. He became very rich and very wealthy. Rich is good. Wealthy is good, but very is better. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, waxing great means gaining more and more. Going forward means progressing, growing until you become very great. It means advancement. So notice here in this story, we find progression. We find advancement. We find promotion. And that's exactly the way God wants our year to turn out. Amen. Amen progressing, advancing, and experiencing promotion. But notice once again how important it was for Isaac to hear God's instructions and to be willing to obey them. Notice in this story, hearing God's instructions was vital. There, there's a, a, a phrase that Jesus said to Martha one time when he and the disciples went to their house, Martha and Mary's house. The Bible says Martha was cumbered about much serving. And uh, she got upset with her sister and she got upset with Jesus. And she walked in there where he was and, and Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus hearing his word. And Martha came in there frustrated, mad at her sister and even got mad at Jesus. Don't you care that my sister's left me to do all this work? So she's mad at Mary and she's mad at Jesus. And what did Jesus say? One thing is needful. One thing is needful. Now, if he was to say that to you, would it be there are 75 things that are needful. <laughs> or would it be one thing is needful? And what was the one thing that was needful? Hear God's word. There's one thing that is needful in every challenge and every adversity and every trial that you and I will ever experience. One thing is needful. Hearing what God instructs you to do. Well, God doesn't talk to me. Really? Uh, remind me not to be around you very much. What is wrong with you that God never talks to you? Did you tick him off or what? I mean, God never talks to you? Are you one of his sheep? The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. They do not follow the voice of a stranger. God's talking. Are you listening? God's always talking, but are you listening? 
And let me remind you, it's hard to hear him when you're doing all the talking. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's amazing that I heard Brother Copeland say this one time. It's amazing that we who know very little try to tell God who knows everything <laughs> something. <Wow>. Amen. <laughs> yep. Brother Copeland said one time he was, he was praying about what to do and he said, he told glory, I'm going to go in that room and I'm going to pray and I'm not coming out until I hear from God. He went in that room and he said, don't, don't prepare dinner for me because I don't know if I'll be out or not. I'm not coming out of that bedroom until I hear from God. And so he went in the bedroom and he said, now God, I need some advice. I need some help. And I'm just going to shut up and, and listen to what you have to say. And he said, God said, well, Kenneth, it's about time. I haven't been able to get a word in edgewise. He said, now here's what you do. He came out in five minutes. Gloria said, boy, you're going to stay in there all night, huh? Five minutes. He said, I got, the, I got the word of the Lord. I know what to do. Sometimes it's hard for God to get a word in edgewise when you're doing all the talking. You should try that sometime. Just go in your prayer closet and say, now, Lord, I believe I'm just going to be quiet for a little while and just see if I might hear something you would say. You'd be surprised. Yeah. He's been trying to get through to you for a long time. All right. Okay. All right. You don't believe me? Try it. You'll like it. Amen. So notice once again, even though going to Egypt, you remember? That's what Abraham did. So that, that's, that's probably why God told Isaac not to do that because his father went to Egypt when there was a famine in the land and he blew it, got in trouble, went the wrong way. And that's why God told Isaac, don't go to Egypt. You dwell in the land that I will tell you of and I will be with you there and I will bless you there. Amen. God's blessings come when you are in the place where he wants you to be. By the way, you're in a good place this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the story goes on and says that God blessed him. He had possessions of flocks and possession of herds, great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him a great example of how God can bless, promote, advance, even in the midst of adversity and challenges. Go to 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. For the sake of time, we're not going to read it all, but it actually begins in verse 1. But we're going to drop down to verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Talking about Elijah. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now, those are the instructions. Notice, if you, if you back up and you do read that, uh, the ravens had been bringing food for the prophet to eat. But when the brook dried up, there was no more, of, no more experiencing ravens bringing food. And so now God says, it's time to get up and move and go to Zarephath because I have commanded a widow woman. Notice that's past tense. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was giving to, going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. So notice, 
she doesn't have enough, but only a last meal for her and her son. And according to her testimony, her own words, after they eat that, there's no more and they'll just die. Yet God told the prophet, go to Zarephath. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now it almost appears that the prophet missed God. He gets there and this woman's ready to die. She's, she's on her last meal. But the prophet knew he heard from God. And so he says, For thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, well, let's back up verse 13. Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. What is he asking her to do? Something that in the natural sounds foolish. Make me a little cake first. Make me a little cake first. Now, when's the last time you were desperate? And God said to you, don't spend your last dollar, sow it. Don't eat your seed. Huh? That's basically what he's saying to the widow woman here. Uh, make me a little cake first. Sow a seed. Sow a seed. Despite the challenge. I've done it many times. Many times. Did I say many times? Many times when I might be down to, it appeared to be our last dollar, our last hundred dollars, our last thousand dollars. And God said, sow it. And I learned to be obedient. We, we were in Little Rock, Arkansas a number of years ago. And I had just put two brand new gold medallion engines on our aircraft or Cessna 421. New paint job, new interior, new avionics. Had less than 20 hours on this plane and we flew it to Little Rock. And in the meeting, the Lord said to me, sow your airplane into Ed Dufresne's ministry. He's hurting and he's not sure that, he's, that I'm hearing his prayers right now. And I knew what Ed was going through. And... Uh, I said, well, Lord, do you want me to do this publicly or privately? He said, just hold fast. Ed stopped. I mean, not 10 seconds later. Brother Jerry, God just spoke to you. Do something. Obey him. He didn't have any idea what God said to me. He told me later, he said, I thought you was going to get up and say, uh, the lady over here in the red dress, God's going to heal you of this, that, or the other. He had no idea I was about to give him my airplane. And he'd been believing. This was... He was believing for his first airplane. I turned to Carolyn. I said, God just told me to give Ed our airplane. She said, well, I know you. You'll obey God. So I went up and I said, well, Lord, apparently you want me to do this publicly. And I, I sewed my airplane into Ed. I said, would you let me fly it back home? <laughs> and uh, then you can send your pilot for it and we'll have the title ready. and Fill it up with fuel and you can fly it back to California. Amen. And the Lord said, now that's your seed for your first jet. Amen. Amen. Let's see, that was one, two, three, four jets ago. Amen. 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 See, a lot of times when, when you're facing a desperate situation, God will ask you to do something that in the natural sounds foolish. But God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Amen? Amen. Notice Isaac sowed in famine. This little woman is sowing when she's down to her last meal. Yes, sir. Progression despite adversity. Amen? For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, 
The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did. And she went and did. If you don't underline anything else or highlight anything else, be sure to underline or highlight, and she went and did. That was the key to her breakthrough. Amen. God gave the instructions, but then it's your responsibility to went and did. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, went and did. <laughs> she went and did. According to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Amen. So notice here, promotion, advancement, Progression, despite the adversity. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter one, verse 33 says, Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. The Passion Translation says, The one who always listens to me will live undisturbed, free from fear, confident, courageous, sheltered from the storms of life. Isn't that powerful? Praise God. I got to read that one again. The one who always listens to me will live undisturbed, free from fear, confident and courageous, sheltered from the storms of life. Hallelujah. To hear from God and to act accordingly is how you position yourself for progression despite your adversity. God will never allow the person who practices this to fail. You need to hold fast to this truth and know this, that God will never lead you in the wrong direction. Amen. He will never take you down the wrong path. Proverbs chapter three, verse five from the message translation says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what he did for Isaac. That's what he did for this little woman. And that's what he'll do for you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Settle it once and for all that it's the will of God for everybody in this room and everybody who's watching my live stream to go forward, to progress, to, to wax great, to increase. Amen. To grow stronger and stronger. The Bible says from Philippians chapter one, verse six, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And the message translation says, the God who started this great work in you will keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish. Hallelujah. You are headed for a flourishing finish if you just won't give up. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them giving up is not an option. Say it again, giving up is not an option. And then I'll close it with this. Proverbs, uh, Philippians chapter three, verse 14. Paul says that we must keep pressing. Keep pressing. No matter how impossible it may seem. Keep pressing. And he went on to say, and keep reaching forth. Reaching forth to those things which are be before. Amen. 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 So that tells me that there's so much more that God has in store for us, but we have a part to play in all this. Amen. We stay in faith. Amen. We focus on the promises of God. Refuse to allow what's happening in the world to distract us. Amen. Amen. And I'll just say this because I've, I've said it thousands of times and you've heard me say it at least a hundred right here in the church. Your best days are not behind you. Amen. They're just ahead of you. Yes, sir. I said, your best days are not behind you. They are just ahead of you. Praise God. Give the Lord a good shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Reach over and lay hands on somebody real quick and pray this prayer over them. In the name of Jesus, you've heard the word this morning. You've heard the promises of God. Now, what are you going to do with it? I believe, I believe 
and I'm praying for you that you will hold fast to every promise that God has given you and that you will experience the fulfillment of each one of them. So I encourage you, stay in faith, remain focused, don't be distracted, and you will see when it's all said and done, progression, advancement, promotion, highest expectations being fulfilled in the name of Jesus, I declare over you, this is my confession over you. You're a winner and not a quitter. And give the Lord another shout. Hallelujah.